Hi, my name is Bruno Lincoln, I'm a student at London Metropolitan University and today I'm completing an assignment for Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Leadership. And here with me I have Rafael dos Santos who owns his own business. How are you today, Rafael? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Bruno? Fine, thank you. And I'd like to ask you, um, firstly, what does your business do? My business is LondonArpa.com and it's an agency that manages and rents rooms in flat shares for the young professional market. And uh, what motivated you to run a business? Well, it's a fun story because I, I first started because I was always fired from my jobs. <laughs> um, I always thought that I knew more than my managers. And the second biggest motivation was the freedom to do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Um, so that's, yeah, I think would be freedom, the main, the key uh, point of motivation there. I see, and based on that, uh, um, any of your ascendants ha have or had uh, business? Yes, uh, my grandfather from my mom's side, he always um, had uh, trade, you know, he started, he had a bar, and then after that he bought a farm, so he had animals, um, he traded animals, and he traded watermelon, sugarcane. I have cousins who have hairdresser salons, bakeries, supermarket, and also a hotel. I see. What characteristics do you have which allow you to run the business? I believe that self-motivation is one of them. Um, I can motivate myself to do it. I'm very ambitious. Um, I also believe that I'm very passionate from what I do and I put a lot of energy into it. I see, nice. And uh, how did you start your business? I first started, I had a job, I was doing promotions at the time and I decided to rent a property and, or in, and rented the other room so I would not pay rent. So that was, that's how it started. So I rented one, was living in it from there, I kept my job, then I saved money, the money that I was not paying rent, saving for the next property, and then rented the second property, and so on and so forth. I see. Oh, quite clear from you. What skills did you need to run the business? I think the main skills to start the business uh, were negotiation skills. I had to negotiate, I had from a very early stage, as I was going to work with properties, I had to learn to negotiate with the landlord, with the agency, and also with the tenants who were going to be renting the property. I had to learn um, customer service and customer care, care skills, and also organizational skills. I think they were the main three to start a business that I needed for my business at least. I see how nice. And uh, did you have a business plan? If I say that you know I started my business with a business plan, I would be lying. No, I didn't. Uh, I think. You know, because I didn't have any business uh, ac academic knowledge, so I didn't go to university to learn business. Um, so probably that's why I didn't have one. It took me about six months. I only created a business plan because the bank asked for it, otherwise I wouldn't open a bank account. So that was the only reason really. After five years, yes, I did develop a business plan. That's how I managed to grow my business. Oh, that's good. Yeah, nice. So, Rafael, how many employees do you have? At the moment, I have eight people um, working for London App. And when it comes to structure, what is yours? What's your management team? Okay, the way that the company is structured is that I have, as I said, I have eight people. Um, so, I have the two main people are uh, the account managers. So, the properties are divided in their postcodes where they're located, mainly in South London. So, we have the South East and the South West portfolio, and I have two account managers who are property managers looking after the portfolio, which includes the bills, the tenants, the maintenance requests, and every, everything that relates to the property. Um, in the office, I have uh, an accounts and credit controller um, who checks the bills, makes everything related to payment. I have a handyman who obviously does the maintenance in the properties and I am the managing director at the moment and I 
overlook you know the the systems and in and, and the jobs that are done and uh, why did you go by yourself why did you go alone i initially didn't start um i didn't start the business uh, on, on my own i started with my best friend but soon after about after a year uh we have a different we had different goals uh he wants to become a doctor so it, for him the business was an extra income and a way to fund you know his university fees and and his life at university while for me i i saw there as a as a nice uh, business structure and a business model so i wanted to develop this you know full time and uh, did you assess the competition did you find a competition i Yes, in a way, um, I always booked viewings with other people, and the way that I assess my competition is that I always put myself in the shoes of my clients, my, my future clients, and looking at what people did not provide. So when I started, for example, I used to change the bed leaning every week. So you know, it's never heard of a flat share mm -hmm. where someone goes into the bedroom and changes the leaning once, almost like a hotel. So that's you know, I always. Had you know different ways to attract people to come and rent with us. I see. Yeah, interesting. And uh, what were your startup activities? When I first started the business, I uh, used to work with host families. So the way that I did was I did leafletting. So I was there myself putting you know leaflets in people's doors where if they had a spare room they could contact my agency and I would find someone to place in there. So then I went to English schools and I said I had rooms with host families and my profit was from what I charged from the client, from, from uh, the student and paying you know, the, the host family for the room. And did you have any help, let's say from advisors or agencies? Yes, I did. The UK government, I think, is brilliant providing help to entrepreneurs and to people who want to start their own business. So there used to be Business Link, where I did several courses for free. I did negotiation courses, I did um, uh, bookkeeping courses, I did cash flow courses. You know, it was like one day. They were no courses, they were more like workshops and seminars where you also learn, you know, you learned a lot of things. So, you know, there were things about online marketing, social media, negotiation, selling, you know, the, the government helps you because in a way what they do is if you get that knowledge and then you develop your business, you then employ more people. So it's a clever way to generate more jobs and make, make sure the economy grows. So that's good. So then they give you the tools to run the business, let's say. Completely, yes. Oh, that's really interesting. It's really good. Did you have any funds or did you... Um, anyone helped you? Uh, the funding that I got initially was, uh, it was a personal loan. I went to NetWest and, you know, eight years ago. So I started the company with uh, 5,000 pounds and it was, it was self-funded. So I borrowed the money. I said I was going to buy a car. Um, and then I used the money to then get my first property. And now I have a turnover of 1.5 million. That's good. And uh, would you think that maybe if you applied the money as a business, do you think they would rent for you in the same condition? Or? I think it's hard. You know, if you, go, if you go to the bank and say, I want 5,000 pounds to start my, my own business, is they will assess in a way that they will find very risky. Because if you leave, yes, yeah, so if you leave your job, to run a business that you know that doesn't work then you don't have the money back so i think that a lot of people that lie to the bank you know they say they're going to refurbish their houses they say they're going to buy a car and then they will invest the money to start the business once the business start taking off they leave their jobs and so they can continue paying the loan and then grow the business i see good yeah <laughs> we have a lot to learn from him and also i was wondering so about the marketing uh, do you use web or social media to promote your business? Yes, um, I've always been, uh, uh, I've, I've always self-promoted me from, the, <laughs> from very early stage. Everyone that I spoke to, word of mouth, I think is still the strongest uh, uh, tool that you can use. But I use a lot of, these days I use a lot of Facebook, I use a lot of YouTube, um, you know, I, uh, Twitter is something that I'm getting into. The answer is yes, I do use a lot of social media to reach people, you know, to, to make sure that I get and, and I educate the client about my business as well. Oh, that's really interesting, that's really, really nice. 
And I uh, also was wondering now, let's come to personal life, um, let's say personal characteristics. What are your attitudes to risk? Well, I think me as an entrepreneur, a, a, as a business person, you know, I would say that taking risks is part of being, of running a business. Uh, and, you know, you, every day or every decision that you make, you need to take the risk. So I would say medium to high, because from leaving your job to start something that you have no idea where you're getting into, it's a big risk. And every time you take a new property, it's a risk. Taking an employee is a risk. So it's, you know, I think running your own business, you are taking you you have to make the decision yourself. So, you know, you, you take risks all the time. I see. I see. And also, I was wondering, how your business contributes to society? Well, I like to think that I do contribute to society because I provide really good accommodation for young professionals. So I like making sure that people who are coming from abroad, they will rent a room, they will make sure they will get here and they will have a safe place to live in. So it's not just about the property, it's about making sure that those who are going abroad, who are you know, going to try their lives, who are going to do a course, who are going to be you know, working, they will have somewhere really comfortable, really clean and really good to live. Um, the way that I set up in my properties is that I would be living in them myself. So I really put, I, I, I have to see myself living in that house in order to provide, you know, that to, to other people. So that's why I think I contribute to society, making sure that I provide good quality and affordable accommodation for young professionals. That's good. And also I was wondering, do you fight for what's the right? Or do you fight for what's popular? I do believe that I fight for what's right because not all my decisions are based in you know what is popular because not everything that's popular is right and not everything that's right is popular. So when you have to make a decision on, on for the business where the employees are not gonna be happy, you know, some people are gonna be happy or some people are not. So it you know, but it has to be a decision that will be right. So my answer is, I make decisions for what is right, That's not what right. is popular. How do you react to changes? I analyze them and I normally embrace. If it's, if it's going to be a good change, I'll give an example. When the government decides to change the law on flat shares, on HMOs, houses of multiple occupancy, the government enforced that we need to have standards and procedures. I analyzed and I embrace that. You know, I was one of the first people in London to do the course and to apply for license for my house, for my houses, because I knew that once you follow the standard, which would be safer houses and better maintained houses for people, it would be a good change. So in that sense, you know, I really embraced. Um, obviously, there are changes that you need to analyze a little bit longer. But I think if it's going to be a good change on the long term, you have people have to, to embrace them. I embrace them. It's good, you see, always complying with regulation. <laughs> so, Rafael, uh, in your words and according to your, your previous experience, how do you define time? Time is, <laughs> it seems to be something that nobody has these days. <laughs> you, know, you never have enough. But I think once you learn to prioritize and to organize um, your day and plan what you're going to do and make sure that you set an amount of time for every task you end up having more time during the day once you know but that comes I, I suppose that comes with with experience and, and time in the business and personal life and all that I see oh, that's nice let's say in future no uh, where are you heading uh, what's your perspectives for the future um, I have plans to uh, develop a new business, which is now in place. Um, with this one, obviously, I learned with all my mistakes. So I'm starting with a business plan, and now I'm checking what my competitors are doing. And once it's launched, I'll make sure that you know it has something that the other ones don't. Just like I said before, and with the current company, I do have plans. You know, I have the whole year planned until the end of this year, and also the next year. I tend not to plan in three or five years because 
the economy changes, laws changes, new regulations come for so short run. Exactly. So you know, I need to make sure I have also planned for change. You know, if something happens, I need to leave. You know, to leave gaps or spaces there in order to adapt to the change. I see. That's good. It's a bit negative now. Um, what are your what are your mistakes? I disagree with you. I don't think mistakes are negative. I think mistakes are good things as long as you learn from them. So everyone will make mistakes, but mistakes are there for you to look back and see what can I learn from this. And once you learn, you develop and grow. So you have a mistake, you know, don't beat yourself up. Oh my God, I made a mistake, I made a mistake. Learn from that and make sure that you don't do it again. So, you know, I think mistakes are actually good things. They need to be there in order for you to be able to learn something. Oh, good explanation. And uh, so, Let's then talk a positive way. What have you learned from these mistakes? Well, there are lots of things that you, you know, depends on what you do. Being in business, you almost obviously need to make decisions quickly. Some decisions are going to be wrong. Some decisions, uh, you know, you're going to lose money. Some decisions. But what I learned from them is that whatever decision you make, even if it's wrong, is what can I learn from this? You know, what is the benefit of this mistake and what can I do to make sure that either it doesn't happen again or the next time it's, you know, it, it's something beneficial to me. And now to finalize, I would like to say, I say entrepreneur, you say? I say change. I think every entrepreneur who creates, who goes into business, somehow will change people's lives one way or another. Some people will achieve much more, you know, in a global business. Some people change their communities. So I think is within each entrepreneur, you know, how to change and improve their lives and the lives that, that they want to uh, reach. Oh, thank you very much. And I would like to thank on behalf of London Metropolitan University uh, thank you for your participation in our work and I wish you the best for your future and for your business as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching as well our video and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye. Bye.